with all the information she had, she wanted to meet Jesus. No one knew why she wanted to meet Jesus. They all just assumed because she was a prostitute, he was a man, she had a filthy mind. So, but we, to find him, was also the problem. She was excited to meet Jesus because this sinful woman wanted to be free from her sinful lifestyle. Then she found out Jesus was at the house of Simon, the Pharisee. She prepared to go and visit Jesus, so she did not want to go empty-handed. She brought something reverent and appropriate for this special, wonderful man who she believed accepted sinners like her. She brought an alabaster cross with very expensive perfume. Perfume, incense and fragrance before God represents the praise of the saints. The latter part in Revelation 5 verse 8 we read, after he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders now down before him. Each of them had a harp and a gold bowl of incense, which are the praise of the people. So when we pray, we pray sincere prayer. It's like incense going up to the throne of God. The best fragrant ointment you can bring to Jesus is your prayers. Bring bring an alabaster flask, your heart, full of praise to God. In John 4 verse 23 we read, Jesus tells us in no uncertain terms what kind of people he is looking for. God is seeking for true worshipers. People who worship him in spirit and in truth. He is seeking for repentant sinners who he transform into genuine worshipers of the living God. Jesus is seeking for an obedient heart from you and me. Woman of God, let us take repentant hearts to Jesus. All the, all the invited guests was in Simon's house. And as they were sitting down to eat, this sinful woman of the city entered. Sin, Simon, she entered Simon's house uninvited. Simon knew this woman very well. He expected Jesus to know her also because what he heard when Jesus looked at you, he knew what was going in your heart. I can imagine how uncomfortable he must have been. Maybe he thought thoughts like this, is this woman going to spoil the whole evening? I'm sure the other guests must have been so embarrassed. Remember, this was a sinful woman and no one wanted to be around her. So what is she doing here? What does she want? Is she going to spoil their reputation? Because Simon wanted to impress Jesus. So he could not do anything. If he had been alone, he would probably have kicked her out of the house. But because Jesus was there, he just sat still. He didn't know how to handle the situation. 
He didn't know what was going to happen in his house that night. But the rabbis was also because women, the Pharisees and the rabbis did not associate with women. What about eating with them? Secondly, she was a sinner. The woman had a double negative package against her. But they did not know why the woman was there. She had a different mission that night. She stood behind Jesus. It was an attempt to hide her faithfulness, her filthiness from Jesus. It was also an expression of her humility and acknowledgement of her sinfulness. She didn't want to face Jesus. But after a while, she sat down at Jesus' feet. The moment she did that, the Holy Spirit convicted her of her sin. The Holy Spirit Fresh, a sinful life before her, and she wept. You see, friends, when the sin and unworthy nature comes into the presence and purity of Jesus, you cannot help but weep. Have you ever experienced? In, in your prayer life, the tears flowed, flowed uncomfortably. It was tears of repentance. She must have had beautiful, long, thick, flowing hair, the crown of her beauty. But she bowed down close to Jesus and used all that beauty to wipe When Jesus was, during the time of when Jesus was on the earth, the roads were dusty. It was all dust roads. So his feet was dirty. But her longing for cleansing, her longing for forgiveness, made her use her beauty to wipe the feet of Jesus. She connected the best part of her body to the worst part of Jesus. In that way, she must have seen my best, my cleanest part, my most beautiful part is worthless before you. Lord, I am a worth, worthless sinner before you. And the dirtiest part of your body is better than my best. Her beauty was her license to attract every man. It was the license of her sinful life. But by bowing low and using it to wash the feet of Jesus, she was saved. Lord, I hand all to you. I lay it at your feet. I surrender it all to you. I hand it over to you to use it for your glory. Then she poured the oil on Jesus' feet. The anointing sealed all her expressions. Her love, respect, adoration, submission, humility, faith, and worship. In James 4 verse 10, we read, Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord, and He will honor you. Divine positions is different from earthly positions. 
If you want to see something clearly, you go on a high platform. Some people go on the mountain and they look down at it. Beautiful. But to get the view, best view of Jesus, of the kingdom of God, if you want to get the God, get down to the lowest position. When you are at the feet of Jesus, you get the best view of Jesus Christ. He will lift you from that lowly position to his throne. Jesus forgave this woman. In Luke 7, 48 and 50, then Jesus said to the woman, Your sins are forgiven. Verse 50, But Jesus said to the woman, Because of your faith, you are now saved. May God give you peace. By saying this, by saying this, Jesus was also proclaiming who he was. I am God who forgives all sin. Many of us are beset with sin, just like this woman. Friends, sin cripples us in serious bondage of the devil. We cannot be of any use to God as long as we continue to live sinful lives. We need His transformed grace in order to be useful in His body, the church. I believe mysteries are revealed at the feet of Jesus. I believe when you strip yourself of your glory, your pride, or whatever it is that your focus is on, that whatever takes your focus from Jesus, take it and cast it at the feet of Jesus. He will crown you with his glory. Friends, I went through a horrible, horrible time. You know, I attend the church, pray meetings now and then, I teach in the adventurous, but I was harboring a hurt that was blocking spiritual walk of God. Someone has hurt me so much. I said, I forgive. I forgive them. But I am keeping my distance. I went as far as when this person greeted me. I didn't greet me back. I was okay when I was among people or as long as I didn't see them. But the minute it was, it was almost like veterans. I prayed. I prayed a lot. I asked God to forgive me. I asked God to take away this horrible, you know, I can't explain the feeling. But I will never forget. On the 22nd of June, it was two weeks ago, on a Friday, was a late evening. I just got this urge and I said, wait a minute, I can't live this thing like this. God don't want me to live like this. How can I teach children and, and, and walk around with this horrible, I call it a hateful feeling. That Friday evening I went, I prayed, and I asked God, please, you've answered so many prayers of mine. Why don't you want to answer this prayer? Just help me to be rid of it. Send the Holy Spirit into my heart to, to cleanse me, to, just to take it away. I can't say exactly if the feeling went away like very, very minute or what. But the Sabbath morning, I was sitting there in the sitting room, and Sister Vanessa was So if 
fine painting, she said. I'm going to think. Come with me to the bank. And I went, and she said, Can I? Or you going to ask me to ask me now? She said, When I ask her to next week, and I'm going to ask her, Will you preach for me? I said, What? Will Jane go preach? I was going to say, I said, no, but I couldn't. When I looked at her, it wasn't so far as face I saw me. I, I couldn't talk. I said, um, okay, let me pray about it, and I'll let you know. Of the Bible, said, but I came to sit there, you know, I was shaking, I was shaking my head to sit at first, so the person behind me couldn't see me shaking. And then, of the Bible study, two brothers agreed with me, and I walked away, I turned back. And I said, you guys, I see you, as I bring to your flag, or it's the do to the year, but it is a good qualm. It's a bit of simple things that I said, yes, pray about it. And the one said, and when you pray, cause the Holy Spirit to guide you. Yeah. 
and we all stand and sing it. He said, "Oh, nice."